Come on, everybody. Let's go. Get ready for a summertime adventure from another summertime story. This is the story of the miller, his son, and their donkey. Written and told by award-winning author Carl Summer. A poor miller named Elmo, his wife Hetty, and their son Mort lived in a small town. Farmers took their grain to Elmo so he could mill it into flour. One day a farmer watched Elmo mill the grain with his donkey. You're working the donkey much too hard, the farmer complained. Give the donkey some rest. Elmo quickly loosed the donkey. Mort, called Elmo, we're going to mill the grain. Why should we mill the grain, asked Mort. It's hard work pushing the stone. I know it is, groaned Elmo. The farmer was upset because he thought the donkey needed rest, so I listened to him. Whenever farmers complained, Elmo always did what they told him, whether it was right or wrong. What do we see Elmo always doing here? All right, Emily? Um, every time someone's complaining, he's always doing the person that they complain about, trying to make it right, even if it's right or wrong. Yes, and he's, it shows that he has no backbone. You know, you got to stand up for what's right, and if the customer complains, he always listens, whether it's right or wrong, and that's not good. Now, we got, I'm a businessman, and I, one of the secrets of having a successful business is that you make the customers happy. But, you know, not if they're going to say, listen, if this costs, say, $100 to produce the price. No, no, that's way too much money. I want to give you $25. If I make it for $25, I'll lose money. I can't pay my workers. So there's a time you have to say, no, we have to charge this kind of money, you see. Hetty was a kind woman. When she came to the mill and saw Elmo and Mort milling the grain, she asked, what are you doing? The farmer complained that the donkey was working too hard, Elmo explained. So we're milling the grain ourselves. When they went into the house, Hetty said, Elmo, you're not working that donkey too hard. Donkeys are very strong. Your problem is you're always listening to others, even when they're wrong. That's why we're so poor. But I don't want to upset the farmers. You must learn to think for yourself and stand up for what's right. Elmo hung his head and mumbled, I know I should. What was Hetty, his wife, trying to tell her husband, Gloria? He said that there's no problem with disappointing people. It just matters when it's right. Right. Sometimes you have to disappoint people. You have to stand up for what's right. And we're going to see more what happens in this story. And Hetty says, you know, that's a donkey. That donkey can work. That's what it's made for. It's a strong animal. But somebody complains, so we find Elmo and his son milling the grain. That's a foolish thing to do, isn't it? Let's see what happens next. Just like his father, Mort also did what others told him. One day his friend Sid said, Let's steal some apples. Okay, Mort said. Sid led Mort to a house that had a big apple tree. As they climbed over the log fence, Sid warned Mort, shh, don't make any noise. What do we see Mort doing? All right, Nikki? Trying to steal apples. Why does he want to steal apples? All right, Garen? Because he's like his dad. He does whatever other people tell him to. Yeah, he's just like his dad. He has no backbone. Let's steal apples, okay. Uh-oh, watch what I'm going to tell you now. Listen carefully. <laughs> There's some boys and girls, they say, here, smoke this cigarette, and then everybody else is doing it, and you know it's bad for your health, and you shouldn't be doing it, <sighs> then you do it. You know, many times boys and girls are big copycats. They do what everybody else does. But you gotta learn to stand up and have backbone, and not to give in. And they, sometimes they do dangerous things. They take pills out of their parents' medicine chest, and because other kids do it, they swallow them. And some kids even die from them. They overdose. It damages their body, their brain, their liver. 
And they think, I'm just having this wheezy feeling. This is a bunch of fun. So foolish. Don't ever do anything to harm your body. Learn to stand up and do what's right. You know, you got to live with this. And I'm fortunate. I've been taking care of my body, you know. And I'm going to be 80 this year. And I'm very healthy because all my life I basically have taken care of my body. And I benefited from that. And so you do too. Don't follow the crowd. You know, we got to have some backbone and say, no, I'm not going to do certain things that I know that are wrong. And I hope you do the same. Silently, they climbed the tree and each picked an apple. Sid took a bite and said, mmm, mmm, these apples are great. I'm filling my pockets with them. Why don't you do the same? Okay, said Mort. When they had filled their pockets with apples, Sid whispered, let's go. Mort jumped on the fence and the fence broke. Crack! Shh, whispered Sid. Didn't I tell you not to make any noise? When the farmer's wife heard the noise, she asked, what was that? They rushed to the window and saw Sid and Mort running away with their pockets filled with apples. It's Sid and Mort, the farmer said. They just stole our apples. The farmer opened the door and saw Sid and Mort racing away. We can't catch them, the farmer said, but I know who they are. If they had asked, I would have gladly let them pick some apples. But since they stole them, I'm telling their parents. Was it wrong for the farmer to tell their parents? All right, Jared? No, it wasn't. Why not? Because stealing is wrong no matter what. Yes. And you know, that's why parents sometimes punish you for doing wrong. I never wanted to punish my children. I never said, oh boy, I'm going to get a chance. No, to punish them. No, I didn't want to do that. I hated to punish them. But sometimes I have five children and, you know, they just like, they, they twist your arm and you got to punish them. You know, and, and just like I was a high school teacher, I never wanted to fail any students. But sometimes they didn't study, didn't do their homework, didn't do their lessons, and they failed the test. So you flunk them, they have to learn the lesson. We don't, teachers don't want to flunk students. Your parents don't want to punish you. I'll tell you a secret, okay? Listen very carefully. If you always obey your parents, you'll never have to get punished. So be smart. Learn to listen to your parents. They do not want to punish you. You'll be a lot smarter and you'll be a lot happier also. By the time Mort got home, the farmer had told his mom what had happened. Why did you steal the apples? Mom demanded. Mort lowered his head and whispered, Sid asked me to go with him to pick apples, so I went with him. Look at me. Stealing is wrong. You need to stand up for what is right. Didn't you say I should listen to advice? Mort asked. I told you to listen to good advice, not bad advice. Now go tell the farmer you're sorry, pay for the apples, and fix the fence. Okay, whispered Mort. What did Mort say when his mom told him, stealing is wrong? What was his excuse, Barrett? He said, but you told me to listen to advice. Yes, well, the mom, you, you told me to listen to advice, but notice what mom said. There's good advice and there's bad advice. So you gotta think. Yes, a lot of people give you bad advice. Your friends, a lot of times, will give you bad advice. You gotta learn to say that two-letter word, no! I know what I should do is right. So learn to listen to good advice. And the best people that give you advice are your parents. And learn to listen to them. One day, Henny said, Elmo, we don't need two donkeys to mill a grain. You should take the young donkey to market and sell him. We could use the money. That's a great idea, Elmo said. Before you go to market, Hetty said, don't let the donkey mill a grain. He needs to be in excellent shape so we can get a good price for him. Hetty fed the donkey lots of grain so he would become healthy and strong. One day, Hetty said, the donkey looks good. 
He's ready for market. Now, don't wear him out by riding him. If he looks worn out and tired, no one will want to buy him. Okay, Elmo said. Tomorrow we'll take the donkey to market. Elmo and Moore tied a rope around the donkey's neck and began walking him to market. When some girls saw them walking the donkey, they began laughing at them. <laughs> That man and boy are so foolish to be both walking, a girl said. One of them should ride that strong donkey. They really are foolish, said another girl. What did Hetty warn Elmo about the donkey? Okay, Emily? Don't wear him out by riding him. Yes, don't wear him out by riding him, because if he do, he's going to be worn out and tired looking. We want that donkey to look healthy and strong, because you get a better price for it. But then some girls here, they see him and they start laughing at him. Let's see what Elmo does now. We should listen to those girls, Elmo said. We don't want to look foolish. One of us needs to ride the donkey. Mort, why don't you ride him? Mort climbed onto the donkey. As they walked, they met some old men and women. What are you doing? asked one of the old men. You're spoiling your son by not making him walk. Listen to the man, a woman said. If you treat your son this way, he'll grow up to be lazy and no good. Let him walk. It's the best thing you can do for him. What does Elmo do about the girl's advice? Yes, Sophie? He takes her advice and rides the donkey. Yeah, has a son ride the donkey. And notice that the older people, when they see the son riding the donkey and Elmo walking... What do they say, Charity? They, they saw the boy riding the donkey and they said, you're spoiling your son by not teaching him how to work and he's going to be lazy whenever he grows up. Yes. I had my children do all kinds of work around the house because I was training them that one day they would have to go out and work. And there's a lot of truth in what they're saying. Because if children just have an easy life, they don't do any work around the house, they just could lay around and just take it easy, they're going to suffer when they get older. Because one day they're going to have to go out and work. And if you weren't trained how to work when you were young, you're going to grow up being lazy. And no one wants to hire you. And let me tell you something. Some of you are going to college. Now in school you get pampered a little bit. People, the teacher might call up to help you do your homework and that kind of stuff. In college, they don't. And you know what happens to a lot of these kids when they go to college that were never trained to work? Oh, this is hard. I quit. They were never trained to work. And so I gave my children all kinds of chores to do in the house. They did dishes. They vacuumed. I had them work on the car. They did all kinds of work around the house. So it's very important to learn how to work. We need to listen to that old man and woman, Elmo said. Mort climbed off the donkey and Elmo got on. As they walked along, they met some mothers with their children. What a shame, what a shame, a mother yelled, shaking her head. That selfish, lazy man rides the donkey while he makes his poor son walk? He should be ashamed of himself, another woman shouted. What does Elmo do now? Yes, Gabrielle? He gets on the donkey and he puts more off the donkey. Yes. We find Elmo now has no backbone. Whatever people are saying, he's listening to. And you know there's an old saying, if you please everyone, you please no one. You can't please everyone. If you try to, it's, you're going to get into trouble because sometimes people are going to give you bad advice and sometimes there's good advice. So you have to make a judgment. And as I told you earlier, many, many boys and girls get in all kinds of trouble because they follow what everybody else does. You have to learn to stand up and say, I'm going to do what is right. They have some backbone. But Elmo doesn't have any backbone. Let's see what happens now. We should listen to those angry mothers, Elmo said. Let's both ride the donkey. Elmo put Mort onto the donkey with him. As they rode the donkey, they passed some store owners. Are you trying to sell that donkey at the market? A store owner asked. Yes, we are, Elmo said. We hope to get good money for him. 
I'll be blunt with you, the store owner said. You're wearing out the donkey with both of you riding it. Look at him. He's hot and tired, and he's dragging his feet. No one will buy a donkey looking like that, another store owner said. You should carry the donkey if you want to sell him. The donkey needs to look good if you want to get a good price. Thank you so much for the advice, Elmo said. We should listen to the store owners, Elmo said to Mort. Let's get off and carry the donkey. He needs to look good if he wants to sell him for a good price. A store owner gave them a long pole. As they were tying the legs of the donkey onto the pole, Elmo said, I'm so glad for the store owner's advice. Now the donkey will look good when we sell him. We should get lots of money for him. Mom will be so glad. What do we find Elmo doing now? Yes, Miles? Listening to the store owners? Yes, he's listening to the store owners. Whatever people are saying, he's always listening. Now, remember, Hattie told him, don't wear out the donkey. Now, now they're carrying the donkey. Now, this is just a storybook, but it's teaching us a lesson to learn to stand up for what we know is right. Elmo and Mort began walking to the market, carrying the donkey on the long pole. As they walked through town, everyone laughed at them. The laughing became so loud that people opened their windows to find out what was happening. A man said to his neighbor, I've never seen such a foolish sight. Two people carrying a strong donkey on a pole to market. To reach the market, Elmo and Mort had to cross a bridge. When the donkey heard the loud noise of the river, he became frightened. He gave a big kick and fell off the pole. He then ran and jumped over the side of the bridge into the river and drowned. Oh, groaned Elmo. We worked so hard and now we have lost our donkey. Notice, Elmo worked so hard and now he lost his donkey. And let me say this, your parents are going to give you lots of advice, all right? And I've seen grown children that turned a deaf ear to their parents, they stuffed their ears, they know I'm listening, I'm going to do what I want to do. Their parents tried to help them, they taught them, they said over and over again to help them. They, they tried, but some boys and girls are so stubborn, and I've seen them. They're older, and they to, to this day, they suffer because they didn't listen to their parents' advice. Let's see if Elmo and Mort learn something from this experience. And I hope you boys and girls, and everyone watching this here, will listen and learn from this story. As they walked home, Elmo groaned over and over again. Oh. How foolish we were for always listening to others. By trying to please everyone, we please no one. We need to stand up for what we know is right. I agree, Mort said. From that day on, Elmo and Mort always did what they knew was right. An award-winning song from Character Kids! Let's be a light, I'll show the way Born to share the 
Don't you be deceived Let the other see 